knocked out by yep. Jake Beckett and recovered by Arkansas. Yes, who? Jackson, Jake Beckett. And that's Beckett. Jake Beckett. Jake Beckett, the captain of the defense. Jake Beckett with the sack. Here comes Beckett. Down goes Shaw. The ball is out. Hey, this is former Razorback Jake Beckett, and you're listening to the Morning Run. Hour number three of the Morning Rush on a Toyota Tuesday. About to bring in Jake Beckett. Make sure you check out the full lineup of 2020 Toyotas at your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. Jake, good morning, man. Thanks for making some time for us. Hey, good morning, guys. It's great to be on with you. So we're going to get into some football stuff coming up, but I was watching your interview with Tim Tebow recently, which you guys did this past November. Just kind of update everyone. Your life is an Army Ranger right now, man. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to catch up with Tim. You know, Obviously, we played each other um, in college a couple of times, but we were also teammates briefly uh, in New England in, in 2014. So um, it was great to know him in in Massachusetts and great to catch up here at Fort Campbell, but just to, to, to catch you up on what I've been working on. Um, I've been in the army for the last three years. Um, I joined in the summer of 2017, um, after I left new England and, uh, I've been stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky with the 101st airborne division, uh, the screaming Eagles, uh, here for the last, uh, 18 months or so. I, I spent a good chunk of last year, uh, deployed with my brigade to Iraq and I've been here training uh, ever since. And I thought it was interesting in your conversation with Tim, and I know we talked to you a while back, that you felt like the military was something that you always wanted to do. Is, is your father, do you have relatives there? Why is that something that you've wanted to do for quite some time, Jake? You know, I was the first in my family to, to serve in the military. Um, it, it wasn't uh, a family legacy or anything like that. My family is very patriotic, but really it was just uh, it was something I, I felt called to do. Um, I, I knew, um, you know, I, I felt the call really in my later college years, early professional career. And I knew that, you know, whenever my football playing days were over, um, you know, I wanted to serve in the military. I wanted to play ball for as long as I could. And I had a good career in the pros, but, um, you know, I knew that, that whenever my, my football playing days were over, that this was going to be the next step. And, um, it, it's been a great journey so far. Now, Jake, the last time you were with us, uh, our buddy Tyler Wilson had commandeered you uh, to be on with us for, for an extended period, and you were getting ready to go to jump school. You were getting ready to begin airborne training, So, and you were a little apprehensive then, which, you know, jumping out of a, a perfectly fine airplane could <laughs> could lead to some apprehension. So how did, how did that training go? Because you weren't quite sure when you were with us last. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... It's, it's pretty funny. The, I like to joke that the Army did not have someone of my dimensions in mind <laughs> when they de- designed a lot of the equipment, including vehicles, uh, parachutes, helicopters, the, the whole nine yards. Um, you know, I, I, never, I never went to airborne school at Fort Benning. Um, I completed ranger school at Fort Benning. Maybe that's what we were referring to. Um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, you know, we, we, the 101st Airborne Division, uh, we're the, the air assault division now. We, we specialize in helicopter insertion. Um, and, and I can tell you that a, a helicopter ride is, is just as uncomfortable as you might imagine mm-hmm. someone, uh, <laughs> of my height to be. Yeah. What's, you know, we, what's some of the comparisons between football and the toughness and the grind of, of camp and then some of the things you found physically and probably even more mentally challenging in your military career that uh, maybe you've leaned on from your football career that's that's helped you through the the grinds of a of a of a tough day in the military yeah i, I think uh, a lot of the lessons that you learn as a member of a football team carry over to to the military as well there, there, i think there's been a long tradition of crossover between the two you know, famously, General Neeland was the, the football coach at Tennessee uh, after his uh, decorated military career. Um, and I, I think there's there's a lot of similarities. This hard work, uh, you know, leaning on your teammates to your left and to your right, um, you know, committing to a, a long struggle, or, you know, kind of like training camp is before a, a long season. You know, we go through a lot of training, um, you know, before we go deploy, uh, to wherever it is we're going to go, uh, going to go deploy. So, yeah, I, I think the, the lessons that I learned in the locker room and on the football field um, have definitely paid dividends uh, in, in the military as well. J- 
Jake Beckett here with us on the Morning Rush. Jake, let's talk some football, man. If you were playing this season, if you were on the Razorbacks roster, would there be any doubt if you'd play or not this year? Well, that that decision, unfortunately, um, seems to be out of the players' hands. Um, uh, it, it's looking more and more like the SEC is going to play, and I certainly hope they do. Um, if I were a Razorback player today, I would just try and concentrate on things that I could control, which is uh, you know my my work ethic, being a good teammate, just trying to prepare every single day and every practice like there will be a season. Um, and then just hope and pray that, that the powers to be um, allow that season to take place. So, um, you know, my counsel to any of the guys on the team um, today is just to keep working, prepare as if the season will happen, and then just hope that it does. Jake, when you look at the different athletes that have unfortunately doesn't look like they're going to play this season, really Justin Fields, the Ohio State quarterback, is on the front lines in trying to get the Big Ten to go back on their initial statement, go back on their initial uh, decision playing this season. Just kind of your thoughts on feeling for the athletes that have worked so hard to this point that won't be allowed to play football in 2020. Well, it's, it's personal for, for me and my family this year because, um, as you may know, my, my cousin, Luke Beckett, plays for Cal Berkeley. And, um, you know, the, the Pac-12 canceled their season. Um, and so, as of right now, um, his season has been canceled. And, you know, I really, my heart goes out to him and all the other athletes out there in, in the numerous conferences who have canceled games. I really hope that the the movement, you know, led by players like, like Justin Fields, um, and, and many others, uh, I really hope that continues to resonate. Um, I hope that, um, you know, fans, coaches, players, uh, athletic directors, state politicians, and the citizens of the various states um, whose who schools have canceled football, um, you know, will we'll continue to speak out and hopefully reverse this decision. You're a fun follow on Twitter at, at Jake Beckett ninety one. If uh, any of you out there aren't listening on Twitter, you've had some strong opinions about college football, and I, I've enjoyed reading them all. You, you're of the belief, as many are, that hey, these students are these players are safer on campus, and that the structure and environment within the athletic department and the football facilities is better for them. Why, why are you um, why are you so strong about that opinion? Well, to, to me, the logic has never added up about why. Um, you know, non, non-student athlete, you know, normal students are allowed to be on campus and campus life will essentially be somewhat normal, but a- athletics is going to be canceled. I mean, that, that makes, that makes zero sense to me. I have another cousin who's starting as a freshman at the U of A, um, you know, a, a, as a, as a non-student athlete, as a normal student. And, you know, he, he moved into his dorm. He's getting ready for classes. There's all kinds of social events. I mean, if things can carry on, almost like normal for every other student, you know, why can't we safely participate in intercollegiate athletics? And I think you you made a good point earlier. Um, You know, student athletes have some of the best medical care, uh, medical treatment available to anyone of college age nationwide. And, you know, with the kind of contact tracing and, um, you know, immediate testing that is becoming more readily available. Um, I, I think there is there is no reason why the season should should not carry on, or at least see how it goes for the first few weeks before you pull the plug. And, and we were listening to a, a clip in the last hour from Raheem Boyd following practice, and, and he was pretty adamant that players want to play, but he was also talking about how safe they are because he said everywhere we go within the facilities, the coaches are reminded us put a mask on. You're required to have it on. I'm sure there's probably some uh, some punishment or retribution if you don't have it on. Uh, Let's just be honest. In your in your personal life, at home, doing what you without any accountability, that's probably not likely to happen for the hundred or so football players, and plus the staff members and everybody else around them. Well, and, and I think um, it, it would be perfectly reasonable to allow a structure whereby, if a student athlete felt uncomfortable, he would not be forced to play. You know, I, I think this year, um, you know, there should be waivers for student athletes who who feel uncomfortable for whatever safety precaution they feel is necessary, you know, if, if they want to, to not play and remain on scholarship, I think that should be allowed. But for anyone else who is willing to play, I think they should be allowed to play. Um, but but if, if you want to opt out, opt out. Just don't make a sweeping decision um, pre- precluding everyone from playing.
And Jake, you bring that up. The NCAA, or I don't know if it's conference by conference, but they've already come out and said that. So you are able to retain your scholarship even if you decide to opt out this season. There have been some players that have made that decision, and that's that's fine. If they want to make that decision, that's okay. Um, but on the note that of what you and Tom, Tommy were talking about, the discipline aspect. I mean, you're in the military, man. You know how important discipline is to everyday life when you have coaches, when you have staff members telling you on a daily basis, social distance, make sure you're wearing your mask. They do that when they're at, on campus at school. Man, if there's no football, what's the incentive to continue to follow these rules, to, to can, continue to follow this protocol if you're a football player? That's my perspective on that. What's yours? Yeah, I think that's a great point. And, and from what I've read, it, it seems like um, it seems like at these schools, these conferences that had canceled the season, um, it, it seems like they're still going to have football players doing some type of football-related activities, like working out, um, you know, maybe even practicing or doing meetings. So it seems like everything is still going to be happening, except games, which makes no sense. And then, like you said, if there's no games and there's no full-time um, you know, practice and game structure during the fall semester, these students are going to fall back into kind of an off-season mentality where you know m- most of their hours are filled with you know, non-football structure-related activities, which is, of course, going to include going out in public, you know, going to college parties, you know, just eating in restaurants. I mean, things that normal college students do. So, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it, it takes a little bit of critical thinking to get to this, but I think it's quite evident that playing the season could actually be the safest way for student-athletes to go through this fall semester. Jake, on, on the note of just playing this season, the student-athletes, we talked about Justin Fields, uh, Trevor Lawrence. Some of these guys have banded together and started the We Want to Play movement. Now, as part of the movement, it seems like a, a some type of player coalition, uh, a, a player unit is going to be involved more, more of the togetherness of a sense. I, I'm curious, as a guy that's played college football, as a guy that wasn't necessarily, that was not paid per se to play college football, what is your perspective on the players coming together and forming some type of union aspect? I want to get your take on that. Well, I think it, it's very interesting, and it's been interesting to follow um, over the last few years, you know, even since I left college sports in, in 2011. Um, you know, players have received more compensation, um, you know, the, the cost of attendance stipends. Um, and and I, I suspect that perhaps some of these uh, cancellations have been in response to um, kind of the growing player unity that, that you reference. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not making any accusations, but it wouldn't surprise me if, um, you know, these um, conference Conference chairman and uh, the NCAA and, and the powers that be are, are worried at what they see as the mm-hmm. potential for players to um, to unionize yeah. and, and you know essentially blow up the existing college football model and they, they could be trying to prevent that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think I think you'd be foolish not to consider that as a possibility. Um, in addition to the you know the the potential safety concerns, that's why they want this season to, to not happen. Jake Beckett with us here on the Morning Rush. You played for the Razorbacks. You played for the New England Patriots. You're an Army Ranger. I mean, just sitting here listening, it's pretty clear you you know you're well spoken. You got a pretty pretty good level, high level of intelligence. Uh, what do you want to do when you grow up? It seems like the world is is your oyster. You can do anything you want. I mean, you you're, you're nearly thirty. It seems like you could do about anything because you've done about everything already. Uh, what 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 do you want to do long term when when you're done with the military? Well, right right now, I, I have the best job in the world. I, I'm focused on serving here in the 101st Airborne Division. Um, you know, we have a very important job to do. A lot of training going on right now, and right now, I'm just focused on that, which is which is all I can be focused on. Um, but it's been a it's been a great journey so far. Um, you know, I, I, I always want to feel like I'm I'm just getting started. Um, like there's always a, a, the the next chapter ahead, the next the next battle to fight, um, and, and we'll see what that is. I mean, it's it's been it's been it's been great so far. I really couldn't have envisioned, um, you know, being here at, at this point. If you would ask me, um, you know, back in at the 2012 Cotton Bowl, if, if I would be here at Fort Campbell in, in 2020, but um, I really can honestly say that um, I, I wouldn't change a thing. It, it's been it's been remarkable to to make it this far in, in the military, and um, yeah, I just couldn't be more thankful. Is politics an area that interests you at all? Because i got to be honest, your, your resume kind of reads like something that you would read of 
someone that has a background of a politician that would would be very popular with voters in our state. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, for right now, I'm, I'm focused on being the best executive officer um, <laughs> of, a, of a heavy weapons company in the 101st Airborne Division that I could be. Well, that's, that's, you've that's, got the political. That's all I can. That's yeah. all I can do right now. <laughs> well, you got it down. You got it. You got the political speech down there. So good. So. Well, you know, I, I spent. I spent too many years around Bill Belichick. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's, it's well one, one day at a time. Yeah. We're, we're we're trying to get better, and that's that's the truth. You know, I, I don't want to I don't want to get stuck looking too far into the future. On to Cleveland, so Jake, do you remember? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to quiz you real quick. Do you remember the four uh, phrases or four things that you had to do <laughs> with the Pats? I, I remember you saying these, and I can't remember them. Do you remember those off the top of your head? Absolutely. Do your job. Be attentive work hard and put the team first how much were those um, drilled into your head on a daily basis when you were with that well every day so it, as you as you pull into the players parking lot in new england um on the front door of the patriots team facility uh, are those four rules and do your job work hard be attentive put the team first and I, i've tried to relate those lessons to my to my soldiers and my platoon i was a platoon leader and because as we as we discussed earlier um, I think those lessons that I learned on the football field um, really translate well to the to the military life, and um, you know it's it's great because you know guys um, they know my background and they know that I, I play college and pro football, and you know they they really soak in those lessons more readily when I can tell them that hey this this is what Coach Belichick teaches, and you know people's ears perk up, and um, you know I, I, I hope that guys will be able to take away those lessons and apply them not only to their military careers, but for the rest of their lives. Jake, when it comes to that conversation, I know you were talking with Tim about just the hard work and talent aspect. When you saw Tom Brady scribbling notes feverishly, your like first or second day in camp. Was that just kind of a sign like it's different here when the best player, best quarterback of all time is, is taking a uh, what a walkthrough or whatever it was that day, like it was his just his job, like it was the most important thing ever. How much did that impact you at the start, not only with your football career, but just how you approach life? Well, it made an enormous impact because I think it's natural for most people to assume that someone like Tom Brady, the the greatest quarterback of all time, you know, hey, in, in just some you know April. Mini camp, you know, he, he's got this down. You know, he knows the playbook, he knows the Patriot way, he knows the team system. You know, no, no one would fault him at all if he just kind of took it easy and sat back. But that that was not the mindset of Tom Brady, and that was not the mindset of Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. Mm-hmm. And there were there were leaders with, with that with, with, with Tom's mindset up and up and down that roster, all throughout that locker room, and it made an impression on me, a new rookie, and every uh, young player uh, and, and veteran who was new to the Patriots, or, Patriots organization, that, you know, hey, this is this is our walk. This is this is how we operate here. Everyone comes in, and, and nothing is guaranteed. You know, you, you work hard here, and you perform, or we're going to find someone else. And I, I think that that type of environment is, is a big reason why they've been just one of the greatest dynasties in all sports. How's the golf game, my man? <laughs> it has uh, it has really fallen off since my since my football playing days. I, I had a lot more time to to hit the golf ball back in those days. I'm pretty sure Tyler, for the first time in his life, he's actually telling the truth when he tells people he's a better golfer than me now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was it, it was that was a lie before, but now I think it's actually true. Well, he, he has told us about some of the battles y'all have had on the course, and uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to the next one soon. Absolutely. Anytime I can get him on the golf course, it's, it's a good day. Uh, Jake Beckett, former Arkansas Razorback, now Army Ranger at, in Fort. Uh, in, and I'm, I want to make sure I say it's Fort Bend, Tennessee, right, Jake? No, oh, it's uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Fort Campbell, it's Kentucky. right on okay. the Kentucky Tennessee line, the, the home of the 101st Airborne Division. Okay. All right. I butchered that, but I just wanted to make sure I got that. Jake, Thank you for your service. Yeah, absolutely, man. We appreciate it. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for having me on. All right. Good stuff from Jake Beckett this morning here on the Morning Rush.